Today we are going to be beginning our discussion of five star plus movies. Now a five star plus movie isn't just a good movie and it isn't just a great movie. It's a movie that makes you stand in awe because of how incredible the art of filmmaking can be. A five star plus film is one that has left its mark on the film industry. One that when you look at the modern day movie, these are the reasons that it's there today. I'd like to make one of these movies every month as we look at the best that cinema has to offer. First film we are going to be looking at is a very surreal German expressionistic film called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Now this is a fantastic early horror film that was released in 1919. So I will be discussing spoilers, but seeing as this film is nearly a hundred years old, if you haven't seen it now, I think it's the time to do so. So without further ado, let's look at the magic that is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The film officially begins when we see these two men talking. Now one of them we are soon going to find out is named Francis and he is going to be our main character. The other is just a man who he's able to tell his story to. All of a sudden a ghostly figure appears and Francis tells the other that that woman is his wife and he begins to tell the story of how she became the way that she did. Let's take a moment to appreciate that this is a non-linear narrative released in 1919. 22 years before Citizen Kane and 75 years before Pulp Fiction, which are both two films that are known for innovating the non-linear style, but this did it long before either of these were around. The film cuts to the town where one of the men grew up and we see this incredible backdrop. This is probably what the film is best known for, these vivid and surreal images that really show that you're living in a world with different rules. You're not looking at Germany, you're looking at something very different and the choice of backgrounds helped make this movie so much better. Shadows were colored in and everything that you're seeing was hand drawn. It really shows that this is the art of filmmaking. The background also shows the oppression of the German regime. All of the houses are built on a hill with the castle on top of it, showing the oppression of the common folk by those in charge and those with wealth. We are introduced to really our main antagonist, Dr. Caligari, and what this film did so well was use this film to tell the story. Instead of describing an evil man, you can actually see him. And this is really the first time that cinema as an art was able to show not only art, but also storytelling. This shot in particular reminds me of a Dr. Seuss drawing, now albeit this is the scariest Dr. Seuss drawing out there, but you see the man in power sitting on an unreasonably large chair leaning over as he checks the public records which are on a podium that has literal symbols on it. You don't need to be a genius to pick up some stereotypes about an oppressive regime. And knowing what we know about Germany between World War I and World War II, he may be saying something about the government. Later we find out that the town clerk has been killed. Obviously we know who the perpetrator is. And this tells us so much about Dr. Caligari. After the town clerk made him wait for only three minutes, he was killed. This shows that Dr. Caligari is not someone to be trifled with. At the fair, which is essentially a metaphor for consumerism, Dr. Caligari sets up his somnibus and draws a remarkable crowd by telling about his creature. After hearing about the wonders of Caesar, we are finally told about him. He is 23 years old who has been asleep for the past 23 years. We see the creature and oh god, look at that haircut! Look, I get he's been asleep for 23 years and this was 1919, but come on, a bowl cut? In all reality, however, I actually really love this shot. It shows the pride Dr. Caligari has for Caesar, and it almost looks paternal. This is Caligari's way of making money and killing his enemies, and it's all captured in this one shot. Caesar wakes up. In his 23 years of sleep, Caesar began to learn everything, present, past, and future. The people begin to ask questions, and this part really shows off human greed. Through wanting to obtain the impossible, like knowing how long you are live, you are ultimately ending your life. Later that night, we see our protagonist being murdered, and this is shown through the use of shadow. Obviously, the MPAA wasn't around in the 1920s, but there were some guidelines. This film was able to get around these guidelines by using shadow, which is very innovative. His friend, Francis, remembers what the prophecy was, and now the film is about to get good. Francis reports this theory to the law, but is still unsatisfied, and he decides to go after Caesar and eventually Caligari himself. The law catches up with Caligari and they question him, and he shows them that Caesar is still there and assures him that he has been asleep ever since the fair that day and he will not rise without him. Anyway, but the murder is revealed by someone else, and Caligari is saved. At this point Jane, the woman from earlier, meets Dr. Caligari who shows her Caesar who wakes up, and this is without a doubt one of my favorite scenes in the film. There is something so great about the way that Caligari and Caesar look at her as she runs away. It is so unsettling and so great. That combined with the great score shows off some excellent, excellent filmmaking. 
In our next scene, which is ultimately a collection of different clips that all happen at the same time, Francis is checking in to see what Dr. Caligari is doing, and he sees him with Caesar. The next part of the scene, however, shows Caesar breaking into Jane's house with his knife. This is so unsettling, so creepy, and one of my favorite scenes in horror history. One of people's biggest complaints with this movie is that you see very dry camera angles. Every shot is long, drawn out, and for the most part, almost stationary. But it works so well in this movie as you see Caesar approach the bed, knife in hand. You see someone lying there asleep, someone coming to murder her. There's nothing you can do about it as an audience member, nothing anyone can do about it. I'm certain most people are familiar with dramatic irony that Shakespeare perfected, in which the audience knows something that the characters inside the play do not know. However, this is the best case of dramatic irony, when you are seeing someone about to be murdered and there's nothing you can do about it. As Caesar approaches the bed, you can just see how well the shot is framed. So well executed. Caesar raises the knife to kill, and yet he can't do it. Just like this film's source material, Dracula, Caligari falls in love with one of his victims and kidnaps her. And again, as they leave, you get this long shot signifying how there is nothing you can do to try and help her. Her family rushes in, they check the window, and see Caesar taking Jane away. Just such an incredible shot. Caesar escapes, Jane's family catches up with her, and Caesar runs off into the dust. However, Caesar's reign of terror ends after he falls from a hill and dies. It revealed that the Caesar that we had been seeing earlier was one that Caligari kept and was actually a dummy. We find out Caligari is really the real mastermind behind all of this. Francis catches up with Caligari, and he knows that he's behind it. They chase each other, and Caligari runs into a mental asylum. This entire sequence is so well edited together, going back and forth between Caesar and Caligari and Francis and the police, it is really great filmmaking. Obviously, the standards for good editing and good filmmaking today have changed, but this is one of the pioneers of innovative editing. Instead of just seeing one clip, you're seeing a collection of clips all happening at the same time that are used to build up suspense and tone, and it is so well executed to get such an incredible film. Next, we see Francis follow Caligari to the asylum after he assumes Caligari may be a patient, before it is revealed that he's the director. Albeit, this isn't the most shocking twist, you were just introduced to this asylum minutes ago, and yet this is one of the earliest cases of a plot twist. This crazy old man may not be that crazy. He may be the director of a well-established insane asylum. But Francis tells the other hospital employees what he found out, and Caligari is now under supervision. What I love about this film's final act is that it isn't so much a horror movie, but instead a detective story. We finally learn about the real Caligari, and this reveal is so great. You get the first dynamic or moving shot in this entire movie. You find out exactly what happened the entire time, but it also acts as a great social statement. You find out why Caligari works in the sound, so we can find a victim to act as his personal murder tool. And whether or not the director intended it or not, it ended up being a great social statement because of what we now know about asylum and abuse. We get a great transition that goes to a flashback, so yes, this makes a flashback in a story that was told to Caligari discovering Caesar for the first time. Caligari begins extensive research before setting his monster out on the town, and he begins to go crazy, and he sees demands all over the screen. Again, this is excellent editing. This is something that has never been done before in film, and yet we're seeing a combination of both what's happening in the real world, but also special effects that happen in post-production. Finally, we go back to Francis talking to the man from the beginning, however, this film does not end on a positive note. Jane is locked away in the asylum with Caesar. Only Caesar has had a total personality change, no longer is he a murdering psychopath, but instead someone who's lost and confused, playing with flowers in the asylum. But then we get the best plot twist of all, Francis might be insane, that he's locked in the asylum just like everyone else, and the film ends on an ambiguous note. So. Was the director of the asylum Caligari, or did Francis dream it all up? We are never told, it's only up to us to guess. So this is truly an excellent film. Is it a perfect movie? Well you could definitely make an argument saying it is. However undeniably, this is a very innovative movie. The director used color to show off time of day in similar locations, which although it wasn't the first time that this happened, it did it in such a great way. The film utilized some great editing techniques, some awesome dynamic shots, and is all around a truly excellent film. It's one of my favorite horror films out there, and definitely one you should watch this time of year. So if you've seen The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, make sure you drop a comment and tell me what you think about it. Do you love it? Do you hate it? 
If you've never seen it before and you did see it after this video, tell me what you thought about it. I love it for one. I think it's truly one of the greatest works of film that we have ever seen. It's so well made, so well directed, so well acted. However, not everyone feels that way. So if you did enjoy this video, drop a like and subscribe so you can join me next time.